Hi, fourth grade friends, and welcome to day one of fractions in line plots. We've been focusing on fractions a lot, so now we're gonna talk about adding and subtracting them using line plots, and this is an example of a line plot, and we will get more practice as we go along. So for today, we are gonna be doing pages 463 all the way up to 465, because we obviously have a handy-dandy vocabulary page. And then on your own, you'll be doing page 466. So we're gonna start with page 463, session one today. So we have learned how to add and subtract both fractions and mixed numbers and how to make line plots. Use what you know to try and solve the problem below. So this is the problem on 463. We're gonna go over one strategy using a picture model to help us. So Emma's class has a jar of earthworms. The class measures the length of each earthworm and records the data in a line plot. What is the difference between the lengths of the shortest and longest earthworm? So if we look at our line plot here, the shortest one we have is four and three fourths, and then the highest one or the biggest one we have is six and three fourths. We don't have a seven, and we don't have anything below four and three fourths because there's not an X there. So it looks like we have three at five, four at five and one fourth, one, two, three, four, five at five and a half, three at six, two at six and one fourth, three at six and a half, and then just one again at six and three fourths. So these are definitely our smallest and our biggest and we need to find the difference, meaning we have to subtract. So we have six and three fourths. We're gonna to to put our bigger number first, just like in regular subtraction, and then we're gonna subtract four and three fourths. Now there's two ways you could do this. You could also do the number line, but for us, I'm just going to make a model. So we have six groups, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six full groups. And then we have this little bit right here. We have this little group of three, four. So each of these are gonna be divided up into four equal-ish parts, right? I'm not an artist, so bear with it with what we got. So we have six full ones. So this one is all shaded. This one is all shaded, 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 shaded and shaded. So we have six total. And we also have to shade in three out of four of the last one. So that's what we're starting. That's what we're starting with in our subtraction problem. So we have six and three fourths. Let me just grab a different color. We'll do blue. So we have six and three fourths, and now we have to take away four and three fourths. So easy is first taking away this because we have three out of fourths here as well. So we took away our three fourths already, and now we have to take away four whole ones. We have one, two three, four, meaning this is our leftover. So we could say two, right? Because we just the three fourths cancel out. So six minus four is two. Um, and we could also say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fourths, which would reduce to two, right? Eight divided by four is two. And we have eight total parts and they're divided up into fourths. You don't have to worry about this too much. I just wanted to show you how you could also show two with having four as a denominator, okay? So if you have any questions, please pause and ask me. Um, you also could have done a number line with this. So you could have started at six and three fourths and then jumped backward four and then go back another three fourths. But for this, I feel like pictures are the best strategy. But again, it's whatever works best for you. So moving on along, we have page 464. We need to explain how to find the difference between the lengths of the shortest and longest earthworm. So we can do that by subtracting. So subtract the length. Of the shortest. Worm. from the length of the longest worm. And then we're just gonna rewrite our equation. So six and three fourths, take away four and three fourths is equal to two. The difference
is two inches. So and IN is just the abbreviation for inch, if you did not know that. So just basically putting into words what we did here on page 463. Now, looking ahead, a line plot is a data display that uses marks above the number line to show the number of times a data value occurs. Each data value is represented by one by an X. So each of these is one worm in this case. So this is one worm and then three worms were five inches and so forth. So um, if we want to see how many measurements are recorded in the line plot, we just count how many X's we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we have 22 recorded and we know that because there are 22 X's on our line plot. So if we continue with that, what are the two X's above six and one fourth represent? Well, since there's two here, that means there's two earthworms that had that length. So we can say two earthworms are six and one fourth inches long. So it's just reading our line plot, getting the information from the line plot that we're supposed to be getting. So what length are the greatest number of earthworms? So that means which one of these measurements has the most X's? And that is five and a half. So five and a half inches has the most. So five and a half. And that's because five and a half has the greatest number of X's above it. So another earthworm has a length of five and three fourths. Show this on the line plot. So we have to go to our measurement of five and three fourths. And then we have to just pop our X in. We have one earthworm that is now five and three fourths. We found another one. Okay. So this is just practice with reading our line plot and then also adding data to our line plot. But this is only day one, so we will get more practice. So for the reflect, if a number line is divided into fourths, why are numbers such as four and one half and five used to label the number line in this plot? And I want you to pause right here and tell me in the Google Meet. Okay, so what are we thinking? If the number line is divided into fourths, why do we have four and one half and five used on the number line, okay? So if you have any questions on page 464, please pause here. Don't forget to talk to me about number three. And then we have one more page to do today, page 465. We have a vocabulary word we have to focus on with this lesson. And our word is line plot. And a line plot is a data display that uses marks above A number line to show the number of times a data value occurs. That's the definition of a line plot. In an illustration, we're going to kind of use the ideas that we just saw on the first two pages. And we're going to do, instead of worm lengths, we're going to do sea lion lengths. Just mix it up a little, you know. And we have 48, 49, 50, 51 and 52. And we'll say one is 48. Oh, then I forgot to label my other axis. Sorry, friends. We have the length in inches. 
So we have 148 inches, we have 249 inches, we'll say 250 inch ones. We have none that are 51 inches long, but then we have three that are 52 inches long. So this is just an example um, of a line plot, okay? With some sort of data in it. So examples we can show. So data I can show with a line plot. Heights of my friends. We could also show birthday months. So who was born in what month? And then we can also show lengths of pencils or lengths of anything, right? And sorry if you can hear any background noise, I'm recording in school today and there's some friends next door working. So if you can hear anything, that's why. So non-examples, so things I can't show. So this is can, this is can't show. One is sports, my family, please. Number of, I'm just going to say the number of classmates I have. the favorite ice cream flavors of my friends. And friends, I'm just realizing I made a mistake. You can't use birthday months here. That would be a non-example. I wrote it in the wrong spot. I was getting too excited. So this one has to be all about measurement, okay? So that's a little key there. For a line plot, you have to have some type of measurement. I apologize for that, oopsie. Now, you don't have to do number two. If you want to, feel free to get some extra practice with reading the line plot. Um, but once you have our vocabulary word table figured out, you can move on to page 466. Just make sure you show me either on Seesaw or on Google Meet when you're done. Happy line plots.